Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we're actually gonna tackle two hooks instead of one. We're gonna tackle the use reducer and the use context hooks because they really go hand in hand and they let us use the React context API feature and uh, handle our global state and access it without having to um, use class-based components. Now, I know before we were able to use uh, the context API in functional components, but we had to use a consumer uh, component and use render props. And if you, I would suggest you check out the uh, documentation on why render props create some uh, other problems, not just in terms of uh, ugly looking code, but a really deeply nested component tree. And hooks, uh, one of the benefits of hooks is they let us um, kind of minimize the uh, component tree that we have. Anyway, I'm gonna try to use an example, a basic example to show you why um, using context is important to kind of write really good looking code. So, okay, so our, what if we wanted to have a header to here that displays the number of people that we have in our uh, database? or our fake database. So let's actually create a component for that. Let's say I wanted to create a component for that. So here in newest person, I want to underneath this header too, I wanna to say people count, which is gonna be a component that will show us the number of people that we have. Let's create that. So let's say people count.js. And here's gonna be a simple functional component. So we import react and here we say const people count, I'm gonna take props. And here's just gonna return a header two with the class of text center and mar margin top four. And it's um, actually we need to pass a prop and it's gonna have a prop props dot people count. All right, now actually we need to export it. So export default people count. Now the problem here is that for us to access the count of, uh, of how many people we have is we have to go from the app.js, we need to pass this number to the newest person. And let's say people, here we pass people count, and this will be people the length of the array that contains the people. And from newest person, we need to then pass it to people count. So here we pass people count, and this will be in our props, so we say props dot people count. And then here in people count, we can access this people count uh, property. So let's save everything. Let's check if our code is running. Okay, so people count is not defined in newest person. Okay, because uh, we are destructuring, so we actually need to destructure, uh, destructure it. So we can remove props from here and we can save. All right, so newest person, People count. Okay, actually, uh, I forgot to import the component. So let's say import people count from the same directory, people count. Let's save, it works. And we see two people, and if we add some other person, it turns into three. Cool. All right, so our component it was working as we intended it to, but this is a bad practice. This is called prop drilling. When you have to, when you need a property in this nested component and you would have to pass it down for more than one level. So we had to pass it to pass it from app to newest person to then pass it to people count. Now context API solves this problem uh, amongst many of the problems it solves. This is one of them. We can have a central uh, store and we can access it. So let's actually implement a uh, context API. So in the source folder, I'm going to create another folder called context. And here I'm gonna create a file called uh, people context. Here, what we need to do, we need to uh, import the create context uh, method from React. And here I'll say const people context equals create context. And this will take an object and our context will have a people array so I'm gonna initialize as an empty array. And uh, so far in our functionality, we only add people. So let's add a uh, method called add person. And this will be a function that takes a person and does something. So these are just, um, we just initialize them here. 
actually this is not an object uh, an array this is an object so here we just say export default oops default people context now for our state we need to also create a, a reducer that catches incoming actions and um, changes the state accordingly so here as well in the context folder I'm going to create uh, a file called people reducer .js and here we're going to have um, actually I'm going to create as well a file called types.js now we don't need to do this in our small application but this is just a good practice this is where you store your action types and if you had more than one reducer and you needed some of these actions is more in more than one file you can store them and uh, in this one shared file and import them from here so here I'm just gonna have one uh, type which is gonna be add person so not import actually export const and this will be called uh, add person in all caps like this because this is the convention for types and this will have a value of add person as well. So let's save this and let's go to the people reducer. And here I'm gonna import that type that we just created. So add a person from the same directory types. And here we're gonna have a, um, we're gonna have our reducer. So let's say export default. Our reducer will take a state uh, and an action and depending on the type of the action it's going to do different things so we're going to have a javascript switch and it's going to switch on the action dot type and uh, of course it's a switch so we need a default case in the default case we just return the state and if you've worked with redux before you you're you i'm sure you're familiar with this pattern and if you haven't um i suggest that you get familiar with redux because it's um it's, it helps you understand uh, how we manage state in, in bigger applications. All right, so for case add person, now what we need to do here, we can handle the logic here, but we can as well outsource it to a function and make our code look better. So um, here we will just say return and we will call a function that we haven't created yet. We'll call it add person as well. And this will take, um, actually not the type add person, I don't know why I changed it to that. So here I'm gonna say add person camel cased and in uh, in my arguments I'm gonna pass both the action dot payload and the state now the payload is some sort of data and it, it will be different from each action type that you send with your action so that you will use in your action depending on what your action is and in this case what I intend to do is that when I send my action type add person I intend to send a payload with it with the data that holds that person all right so here I'm going to create this action or this action handler call it add person const add person it's going to take a person and don't let this confuse your action payload with person. These are arguments here. I can name them whatever I want. So it's a person and it's going to take the state. And here, uh, it's a good practice not to mutate the state, not to change the state itself. Create a variable and then spread the state and then add only that change in the state. So here I'm going to say const new, uh, no, new people for the new array of people. And here it's going to be equal to an array and I'm gonna spread the existing people which are stored in the state. So actually state.people. And I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna add person at the end of the, the array. And now I'm just gonna return, return, I'm gonna spread the existing state and then add people. And you notice in our application and people is gonna be this new people. In our app, we only have people, but it's a good practice to have any type of uh, data inside of, 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 a, of a key inside of your state and not have the whole state as your array of people, because maybe later you will decide to add some other type of data. All right, so we're done with this reducer. Now we need to go to the app.js and actually use this reducer. So here I'm gonna import use reducer as well from React. Uh, we're gonna import the context. So import uh, people context from context, oops, context slash people context and the reducer as well. So people 
reducer from uh, context slash people reducer. And here, I'm gonna actually call the, uh, the use reducer and say const, let's uh, leave that right there and say use reducer. And if you hover use reducer, it's a it actually has a um, cool um, description. It says, when you have a complex state logic that involves multiple sub values, it also lets you imp um, optimize performance. And what's cool about this, you don't have to pass actions down to your components. You just pass this dispatch and then call the actions from there. And all those actions will be stored inside of this um, reducer so that you, it's more organized. Your code is more organized and more efficient. So, okay, so the reducer takes two things. The, re um, the use reducer takes the reducer that we want to pass it. In this case, it's people, people reducer. And sorry for saying reducer like 10 times in the span of a minute. And we need to pass it an initial state which is gonna be our people array. Or actually, no, not the people array. Actually, we don't need to use use state anymore. So we need to remove this. Um, say people equals this. Or well, actually, let's make this the initial state. Initial state equals, and it's gonna be an object. And inside this object, we're gonna have the people um, property, which is gonna be this array. And here we close the object like this. And now we pass this initial state as the initial state for our use, uh, use reducer function. And now our use reducer will give us both the state and a dispatch uh, setter that will let us dispatch actions, which our reducer will later then handle. Now we also need to change this add person. We no longer use the set people because we don't use the set uh, use state anymore. So instead our add person will now dispatch an action with the type, actually we need to import it. Actually here I'm gonna do import, uh, add, oops, add person from, oh I can't type, from context slash types. And here the type is add person and the payload will be uh, this person that we got passed in. So now, if we wanna add a person, we're gonna call this, and this will actually, um, uh, this will be passed down using the context, and when, whenever we call this from any component, it's gonna pass uh, dispatch this and pass uh, a payload of this person, and then the reducer will catch that, where is the reducer here? It will catch it and then call this, and it will add it to our state. All right, one more thing left is that we need to actually use the context that we uh, brought in. So here, um, I'm gonna wrap everything. So let, I'm gonna cut all of this and I'm gonna use the people context that we brought, dot provider. And anything underneath this context, um, this provider will have uh, access to the context. So we, it needs a value which is an object, so we do um, curly braces twice. And here we, we're gonna have a people value, which is gonna be in the state dot people. And we're gonna have the add person, an add person function, which we will call add person and it's gonna have the value of this add person so we can leave it like this. This is gonna work because of ES6. And inside of here, we're gonna paste our, um, mark, uh, our container again except now we don't need to pass any of these props. And I'll show you how we're gonna access them in a second. So let me remove all these props. Now we need to go edit our uh, components so that we can actually call these actions and access the context. So here in the form, uh, I need to bring in use context and use it here. And if you're familiar with context API before in a class-based component, to use a, 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 an action from the context, it had to be a class-based component and use a static reference to the context. Now we no longer need to do that. Now we can here say const context equals use context, which takes one um, argument, which is the context, so which is gonna be people context, which we need to import, import people context from 
go back one level to context slash people context like this. And now we passed it to use context. Now we have a reference to it. So here, instead of using the add person that we passed in the props, we can just say context dot add person because we passed it using the provider. And now we don't need props anymore. And I think this is it. Yeah, this is it for the form. Let's go to the people one here. And now we don't need props here as well. And we can we can use the context here and say const context equals use context. Actually, uh, we need to import it here. Let's say use context and the context as well, actually. So import people context from go back, um, go back one level context slash people context. And here we use context and we pass people context. And now here we just pass, uh, we just use rather context.people.map and we'll have access to the people uh, array. And now let's do the same in newest uh, person. Let's import um, use context. And actually we can just copy this, the context. And here let's say const context equals use context. And we pass people context. And uh, here, what do we do actually? Oh, we don't need props. And to get the newest person, we can say const newest uh, person. Oops, person equals context dot people. Um, and we access the index context dot people dot length minus one. Now this is the newest person. So we can do the same here. Well, actually, no, it needs to be outside so that we, we can access it in our markup as well. And I think this is it. Yeah, we set the title and we console log stuff and, oh, we don't need to pass the people count anymore because we can access the content from, context rather, from this uh, component. Now we don't have to, this is not prop drilling. If we just pass it from here, it's not a problem. But I just wanna, you know, show you and so that you can practice using uh, this hook so that you will become more fluent in writing this. So we'll get use context here as well in people count and we need to import the import the people context. Uh, people context from go back one level context slash people context. And here we can say const context, oops, context equals, again, oops, sorry guys, equals use context, and we pass it people context. And here the count will be not in props, we don't need props, we just need um, context dot people dot length, and we can delete the rest of this. And let's save all files. Let's see. Um, use use state is defined but never used because we don't need it anymore in the app.js. Let's remove this unnecessary import. Let's save. Let's check our app. Let's make sure everything works. Cool. We get newest person, Jane Doe. And if we add uh, Mary Poppins, we add person, we get Mary Poppins here. We get Mary Poppins here, the title changes and the number is correct. And if we keep adding stuff, everything changes accordingly. The functionality still works the same while using the context API for better practice. All right, cool. So this has been use reducer and use context. And um, by the way, guys, I've uh, I will I've been linking the um, link to the repository, GitHub repository, and you can see each video has its own branch. And I'm gonna as well make this into a branch and call it use context reducer uh, so that you can access the code in case, um, you know, you were stuck somewhere. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.